In Benilius Cardenosim received the Paul as the outward sign of his Christian dignity. May he now bring it unstained to the Father, symbolizing his faithfulness. In life, Cornelius Cardenosim cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ greet him with this word of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. In baptism, Cornelius Cardenosim receives the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sins and death.
morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. We welcome you all to our church. We will now begin the Requiem Mass for His Eminence, Cornelius Cardinal Sin. Please rise and together we sing the entrance hymn. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to this uh, Requiem Mass for His Eminence. Thank you all for coming, Your Excellencies, everyone, brothers and sisters from the three parishes and from Tumbarum. Uh, we pray that our prayers uh, together will uh, unite us all and also help our, our, uh, our brother uh, Cardinal uh, Cornelius Sim. Today we want to send, our, send him off. We want also uh, to continue to pray for him and to, to pray for the church. Not that we, uh, without him. Brothers and sisters, Let's acknowledge our sin and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess, I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my, thoughts and in my words, in what, what I have, I have done, done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Cornelius Cardinal Sim, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reign with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. 
no torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They are leaving us like annihilation. But they are in peace. If they experienced punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction. Great will their blessings be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is to be sung. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life God is my shepherd so nothing shall I want I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love I walk by the quiet waters of peace Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wand. Beyond my fears, from death into life, you have set me 
a banquet of love in the face of hatred crowning me with love beyond my power to Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd be, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord to both of the dead and of the living. We shall all have to stand before the judgment seat of God. As scripture says, by my life, it is the Lord who speaks. Every knee shall bend before me and every tongue shall praise God. It is to God, therefore, that each of us must give an account of himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise to honor the gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus said to the crowd, All that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I shall not turn him away, because I have come from heaven, not to do my own will, but to do the will of the one who sends me. Now the will of him who sends me is that I should lose nothing of all that he has given to me, and that I should raise it up on the last day. Yes, it is my Father's will that 
Whoever sees the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life, and that I shall raise Him up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters in Christ, families of late Cardinal Sim, our members of the diplomatic corps, and our brothers and sisters from the Christian groups, Shalom to you all. There's two certainties in life, regardless of your race, your belief, or where you come from. And these two certainties of lives, all of us will go through it. The first certainties of life is that the certainties of birth. All of us born and birth is not avoidable. Every day we listen to people who are born in this world. Because we are born in this world, then the second certainties of life is real, and that is all of us will one day have to face death. These two things in life, none of us could escape in this reality of where we are. But what makes dif the difference between all of this? The difference is this, how we live our life. How you and me live our life make a great impact on the people we meet. Today, we're not celebrating the death of our late Cardinal Sim, but we are celebrating his life because he has touched many of us in all of his ministry. In Romans chapter 14, in today's second reading, we listen to it very beautifully. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So that whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. You know, to not talk about cardinal sin life is to not talk about Christ, vice versa. If we do not talk about Christ, then we also do not talk about the life of cardinal sin. Because for in his life, he lived for the Lord. And when he died, he died for the Lord. Because he belonged to the Lord. We see it in him. We call it in persona Christe. Acting in Christ. Or auto Christus. In the person of Christ. And that is what Cardinal Sim. You know, I have a, on a lighter note, story about Cardinal Sim, which is very much reflected on his life. I like to entitle that story, you know, many of us are familiar with wrong place, wrong time. But for him, it's right place, right time. In the year 2001, when he was just appointed as apostolic prefect in Brunei. He made his first trip to Rome, and then it was his first official trip to Rome, together with all the bishop of the Malaysia Singapore Conference. And when he was there, of course, he was his first official trip as the Monsignor at the time, apostolic prefect. And one of the prayer time with the Pope gathers all the bishop and all the cardinal in 2001. So he was walking there and because he was only the prefect at that time, not the bishop, he was walking along with them and he was sitting in this area and the rest of the other crew was sitting on the other side. And Emeritus Archbishop James Chung, James was calling him uh, Pito Chung, the Kuching one, Emeritus, was calling him and he was looking at him, he said, 
and Peter Chung said, so finally, the prayer service was over. Then after the prayer service was over, Peter Chung, Emeritus, tell him, do you know where you sit? And he said, I do not know. This is my first time. He said, give me your skull cap. And he took the skull cap of our that time prefect. And as the cardinal passed by, give me your skull cap. And he showed to cardinal, look at the color of this skull cap. One is purple, one is red. You are sitting on the red skull cap. <laughs> in another word, in 2001, he already sit at the place where all the cardinals sit. We thought, we thought, we thought that was, we thought that was the only incident of the revelation that he was sitting in the cardinal seat until a few months ago, we received a photo from his classmate when he was studying in Stimmerville in 1989. And in 1989, during Thanksgiving in Stimberville, they were asked to dress up for a fancy dress, they call it, to knock around each of the dormitory where he was staying. Guess what he was dressing up as? As Cardinal. We still have that picture to be released in due time. Right place? right time he is known to be a reluctant priest meaning that he was not choosing to be a priest he did not want to be a priest in the first place he was invited one day to arrange a chair in a prayer meeting in the syria church by our led, by our late priest father peter chang peter chang asked him cornelius asked him can you attend the prayer meeting? What do I do? Just arrange a chair. So he went. He arranged a chair. Later that he know, he was ordained as a priest. So if somebody asks you to arrange a chair, <laughs> uh, be careful. As a priest, his priesthood was not an easy one. Two years in his priesthood, in 1991, he was serving alone in the tree church. Ten years after he was ordained as a priest, in 1998, he was installed as a prefect. That was not the end of his journey. From a reluctant person to be ordained, he moved forward and one day, as he was making his way to Eucharistic Congress in Mexico in October 2004, he was called by the nuncio to Singapore. And he was surprised how come the nuncio called him. And when he was there, the nuncio told him, have a drink. He said, I do not want to drink. Have a drink, the nuncio said. And when he drink, the nuncio tell him, you are to be installed as the bishop in Brunei. And he say, I'm not ready. I need to go for a retreat. And the nuncio told him, you're going to your Christian Congress, right? Yes. Have your retreat there. And come back and be installed in 2005, January. His journey did not end there from a reluctant priest. One day, this year, 2020, in November, he was sitting in the kitchen having a nice dinner. And somebody texted him and said, Congratulations, Your Eminence. He was thinking this might be a joke. But the joke turned out to be real. 
everybody started to congratulate him. And everybody tell him, you are a cardinal now. Right place, right time. He was at the right moment when the church need him. And he was there. John 15, 16. You did not choose me, but I choose you. You are appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And indeed, that fruit lasts for many years in our community. As a bishop, he chose his logo or motto. And all of us know his coat of arm. And his motto was Duc in Altum, which is Luke chapter 5, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for catch. That was his motto, Duke in Altum, put out into the deep. How do we measure the success of a church or the parishioners? Do we measure the success of the church by the size of the church? By the number of the people we have? Do we measure the, the success of the church by the wealth we have? The more money the church generates? How do we measure the church? For Cardinal Sim, he measured the church not by the size and not by the wealth, but Duke in Altum is someone who is a deep thinker, a deep seeker of faith. Are we a church who is deep in our faith? Or are we a church who is very much shallow when it comes to our faith? Cardinal Sim, his love for the truth, his deep thinking, very much show in his action. The Vicarate Faith Formation Program he set up, and some of us attend it, many did not. His deep homely, very often we find it very hard to swallow, and sometimes spike us in our heart because he speaks the truth. He go deeply into all of us. He never hide his word. And many times, for some of us, we get offended. But he was called to tell the truth. You know, Cardinal Sim very often tell us this. Ready at all times to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. He set up six priority for our vicariate. He add on one more a few years ago. So make it seven now. These seven priority he left for you and for me. For us to carry on in our faith. The first, adult faith formation. Bible study, evangelization, youth, vocation, Catholic social work, and mission. Out of these seven, I list you a few of his favorite ones. Number one, which is very much close to his heart, the youth. He loved the youth very much. And the youth loved him. He spent time with the youth. In fact, he joining them all over the world for the World Youth Day. He was in the World Youth Day with the Pope in 1995 in Manila. He was in the World Youth Day in 2008 in Sydney, Australia. He was in the World Youth Day in 2011, Madrid. He was in the World Youth Day 2016, Poland, together with the youth. And it's not enough that he joined the World Youth Day. He also joined Asian Youth Day. 
He was in Asian Youth Day 2009 in Philippines. He was in Asian Youth Day in 2014 Korea. He was in Asian Youth Day 2017 Indonesia. Together with the youth. Not only that he satisfied in going out with the youth, he also set confirmation program with many parents find it difficult. He set up confirmation program. He said to me and to us priests, since I have to confirm the youth, might as well I do confirmation retreat. He went all over the place giving confirmation retreat to the youth in country and out of country in Sabah and he was invited by the priest in Labuan a priest in Sabah also to give confirmation retreat to their youth he never stopped forming the youth and it is not enough he is at every youth activities he was in the lifeline he was in the FOP he was in the 40 hours famine he was very much immersed with the youth. It very much reflected in the life of Christ. In Matthew, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belong to such as this. You know, when Pope Francis say, priests should be shepherd, living with the smell of the sheep. At time, he literally smelled like the sheep because he regret his status and spent his time with the youth, even rough it out with the youth in wherever they stay. Adult fed formation for his conviction of go out into the deep to know the truth, for his very much eager to teach us, to educate us of our faith. I come that they may have life and may have abundantly. His Catholic social work, that many of us do not know that, personally, which he has done so much, because he always tells us in Matthew chapter 25, I truly I tell you, whatever you did for the one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me he's very much involved with the migrant worker the migrant community and he always tell us our church is a migrant church he set up many programs for the migrant community he was also visiting the prison and do eucharistic celebration there twice a year hospital visit how many of us all here have not been visited by our lead Cardinal Sim when we were in hospital. Even to the end, when he's very sick, he still choose to visit the sick. When we even tell him, do not need to go because you are sick also. Still, he go and visit. And many of us are visited by him and were touched by him. And he also listen to counseling marriage problem youth problem at one time he even sit down to listen to a couple fighting at 2 a.m. in the morning I told him Karina better sleep but they would choose him not to sleep I don't know what he listened there but I think he spent time listening marriage problem youth problem all come to him feeding the hungry with the St. Vincent de Paul. He continued to work with the St. Vincent de Paul in our community, feeding the hungry, providing food for others, giving food ration out to others. And many of these things are not publicized. Why? What your right hand do, your left hand must not know. And that is the way of Catholic Church. We do not go around publicized what we do to others. Now, vocation. One of the most funny things for which I always reflect. When he was asked 
every time when he go around the country, when people ask him, Cardinal Sim, how many priests do you have? He say, three. Then people say, 300? They say, no. 30? He say, no. And he smile, only three. But ironically, when he was installed as cardinal, on 16 December 2020, he was appointed by the Pope to be the cardinal for the congregations for clergy. He said to us, priests, what do I know about looking after priests? I only have three priests. <laughs> we very often joke to him this way. Maybe the Pope recognized how much you love the priests and how much you care for the three priests because in your priest meeting, you always have 100% attendance. <laughs> in your priest outing, you always have 100% attendance. And in the priest clergy recollection, you always have 100% attendance. Who would not recognize that of your 100% attendance? Even Pope Francis recognized. So therefore, you in charge of the clergy. You know, we listen to many quotations from our late cardinal. Every time when we ask him, I say, Cardinal, go for holiday, take a rest, look after yourself. Very often he tells us, I only rest why when I am with the Lord. Because his work never finish until the end. Until the end, he kept working and entrusted the Lord. You know, St. Paul said it very beautifully. Let us not become weary in doing good work, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. You know, to us priests and to us leaders, he very often tells us this in his last few homilies. He tells us, as leaders and as priests, you must know the way, you must show the way, you must lead the way, he said. And he always led by example, imitating Jesus Christ, his Savior. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. His action of serving others sometimes put us priests to the shame. He very often disregard his title as a priest. Very often he disregard that he is the bishop, and very often he disregard that he is a cardinal. He continue to serve, and sometimes put us to shame, and we tell him, cardinal, bishop, do not do it. Let us do it, and he say, no, I want to do it. He wash the dishes. And he cleaned it and dried it up. And many visiting priests who came here were very shocked that our bishop washing dishes. And it's not for showing off. And he really loved doing it. In fact, I leave him to do it very often. Huh? <laughs> I do the eating. <laughs> when we ask him of his legacy, you know, I look at Oxford Dictionary, the meaning of legacy. I say to myself, what is the meaning of legacy? You know, I need to look it in the Oxford Dictionary, I say. In Oxford Dictionary, legacy means an amount of money or property left to someone in a will. Well, Cardinal Sim has very little interest in both of them. 
He has no interest for money. He has no interest for properties. But I guess his greatest legacy is two things, which many of us are familiar with. His love for the poor, migrant Christmas party, which he set up for many years, which grow. And his personal financial aid, which many of us do not know then, that he give money to people by not using the church money, by using all the ampao that you are given to him. And we even tell him, keep that money to yourself, Bishop. And he say, this money is for everybody. He's the only bishop that I know who do not have a wallet. He never have a wallet. Every time when I go out with him, when it comes to paying, he just... <laughs> no. His deep trust in the ampao that might be in one of the pocket. <laughs> Sometimes, both of us do not have the money also. <laughs> we have to call somebody. <laughs> It happened. <laughs> and his love for the youth. These two things are his greatest love. The poor, the youth. His greatest legacy for us here. One day in the kitchen, a few months ago, we asked him at dinner, Cardinal Sim, are you not worried that people might take you for a ride? Or take advantage of your kindness? Or just plan bluffing you in your kindness. You know what he said to us? He recited us the Mother Teresa quote. Mother Teresa said, people are often unreasonable and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish motive. Be kind anyway. If you are honest people, People may cheat you. Be honest anyway. If you find happiness, people may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world the best you have, and it may never be enough. Give your best anyway. For you see, in the end, it is between you and your God. It was never between you and them anyway. And he said it to us, which put us to shame many times. In conclusion of this homily, in 1991, Cardinal Sim, then Father Sim, at the time who was only a two years in his priesthood, at the age of 40, many of us do not know that, two years in his priesthood, at the age of 40, given the most biggest task in looking after three church, KB, Syria, and Banda, and Station Center. He always tells us that is one of the best years of his priesthood. He was left alone to look after all of us, the three church. You know why he said that? That was the only time when the three church were very much united. And it very much reflected in this event that all of us are united today. You know, he left behind after 31 years as a priest. After coming out from the 1991 baptism of fire, now in 2021, we have three priests, one seminarian. Not bad for a reluctant priest who at the end become a cardinal. Unless a grain of wheat falls in the 
in the earth and died. It remains but a single grain, but it died, it bare much fruit, and indeed, he gave it all to all of us. I'd like to close with this uh, Second Timothy 4, 7, 8, and many of us are familiar with that, very much reflected on our late cardinal sin life. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in the store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearance. Cardinal Sim, last word to us on the 6th of May, before he go to Taiwan. God has opened the door. And so when he opened the doors, it is best to walk through. On the 29th of May, our good God has opened the door for our beloved Cardinal Sin to enter. And he walked through. His Eminence, Cardinal Cornelius Sim, rest in peace. Amen. Please all rise. God Almighty Father, raise Christ his Son from the dead. With confidence we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. In baptism, our beloved Cornelius Cardinal Sim received the light of Christ Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our beloved Cornelius Cardinal Sim, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our beloved Cornelius Cardinal Sim, shared in the priesthood of Jesus Christ, leading God's people in prayer and worship. Bring him into your presence, where he will be taking his place in the heavenly liturgy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our beloved Cornelius Cardinal Sim, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our beloved Cornelius Cardinal Sim. Strengthen our hope so that we might live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our shelters and our refuge. 
You listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the praise we offer for our departed brother, Cornelius Cardinal Sim. Cleanse him and all the faithful departed of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. You will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. You will become our spiritual dream. Blessed be God forever. Reverend, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Cornelius Cardinal Sim, we beseech your mercy that who he who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in whom the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful, Lord, life is changed and all is ended. And when the earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominion, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as well and we acclaim.
For those who cannot kneel, please remain standing. We are indeed holy, O Lord, the fall of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and then to bring me to his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. How may we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Cornelius Sim, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember, O Lord, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of their resurrection, and all will die in your mercy. Welcome them. Into the light of faith, have mercy on us, we pray. Thou with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother God, with the blessed Saint Joseph, with the Apostle, and all the same, we appreciate you throughout the ages. We may marry to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. All rise. At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we will be there to say. as we forgive those 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to Apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look now on our sin, on the faith of your church, and gradually grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
God, whose Son left us in the sacraments of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Cornelius Kandanosim may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reign forever and ever. Amen. With faith in Jesus Christ, we must re reverence the body of our brother, Cornelius Cardinal Sam. Let's pray with confidence to God in whose sight all creation lives, that we will raise up in holiness and power the mortal body of our brother and command his soul to be numbered among the blessed. May God grant him a merciful judgment, deliverance from death, and pardon of sin. May Christ, the Good Shepherd, carry him home to be at peace with the Father. May he rejoice forever in the presence of the Eternal King and the company of all the saints. Saints of God, come to his aid, hasten to make him angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May the angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant to Cornelius Cardinal Sim, O Lord, and let your perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. The sprinkling of holy water remind us that through the sacrament of baptism we become children of God and the offerings of incense enhances our early bodies as temple of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Into your hands, Father of mercy, we commend our brothers, Cardinal Cornelissim, and assure a certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you have bestowed upon our brother Cornelius Cardinal Sim in this life. Now sign to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurance of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. Amen. In peace, let's take our brother, Cornelius Kandasim, to his place of rest. Thanks be to God. I just like to invite everybody to sit down first for a while. I just like to announce the order of the last respect. There's a few things we need to do. 
First and foremost, uh, we just like to remind you that uh, the order of the last respect will be just pass by and bow and do not need to touch the coffin or you know, maybe some of you want to kiss it but do not do that. Huh? Do not need to touch the coffin but bow and move because there are quite a number of people who wanted to pay their last respect to our Cardinal Cornelius Sim. Now the first batch of people will go out for the respect of our late Cardinal Sim will be the group of uh, our brothers and sisters here from this side. So we'd like to invite you to be the first one to come out after to do your last respect and you can make your way through the, the church, uh, I mean the exit of the church. Then after them, the second group of people will do the last respect with those people in the tent, those in the camp outside, uh, because they are there without aircon. All of you have aircon here, so, so you just sit down. Uh, you do not need to worry about that. Then after them, where people from the parish hall, then from that, followed by you all from behind, all the way to in front, upstairs, downstairs. Then last will be the remaining of people here. This side also will coming later. So that will be the, the, the order of respect. And please, uh, out of respect for our late Cardinal Sim, Please do not take photo of, uh, of the remains of our late Cardinal Sim. We want to remember him as where we are remembering him before. So please avoid the photo taking when it comes to your turn to visit your last respect on our late Cardinal Sim.
If I've only known the last time would be the last time I would have put off all the things I had to do I would have stayed a little longer Hugged you a little tighter Know what I'd give for one more day with you Cause there's a wound here in our hearts where something's missing And they tell us that it's gonna heal with time But we know you're in a place where all your wounds have been erased And knowing yours were healed is healing ours The only scars in heaven they won't belong to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken And all the old will be made new And the thought that makes us smile now Even as the tears fall down that the only scars in heaven are on the hands that hold you now. I know the road you walked was anything but easy. You picked up your share of scars along the way. Oh, but now you're standing in the sun. You fought this fight and your race is run This pain is all a million miles away The only scars in heaven They won't belong to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken And all the old will be made new and the thought that makes us smile now Even as the tears fall down Is that the only scars in heaven Are on the hands that hold you now And a day goes by that we don't see you You live on in all the better parts of us Until we're standing with you in the sun We'll fight this fight and this race will run Until we finally see what you can see Oh, the only scars in heaven they won't belong to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken And all the old will be made new And the thought that makes us smile now Even as the tears fall down Is that the only 
scars in heaven Are on the hands that hold you now
Mr. 